from the effects of Typhoon Infa, on the afternoon of July 31st, the roofs of multiple houses were destroyed in the Fengfeng mining area in Handan, Hebei province. The huge iron sheets of some roofs were overturned by the strong wind, with one row of houses in particular having all their roofs blown to the ground. Pedestrians on the road had to lie on the ground to avoid being blown away by the wind. A concrete pole on the roadside was blown down and hit a bus. Fortunately, the six passengers on board were not injured. A construction cradle outside a high-rise building was blown by high winds and swung violently. There seemed to be two construction workers on the cradle, but no news so far of what happened to them. In the evening of the same day, there were large ball-like clouds over Handan City in Hebei province. Waves of black clouds continued to roll in and swallowed everything, displaying a frightening scene. There are also videos posted by netizens showing that the glass of a new building in Handan was broken by high winds, and the interior was a mess. A building's exterior wall coverings were blown everywhere by the wind like paper mache. One person commented that every disaster is a test for China's tofu drag projects. Typhoon Infa is different from previous typhoons. It has three unique characteristics. Namely, the path is weird, the impact range is large, and the movement and weakening speed is slow. First of all, the path of Infa is strange and complicated. This typhoon originated in the northwestern waters of Guam and weakened slightly in the evening of July 21st, but continued to move toward Taiwan at a slow pace. However, on the morning of the 23rd, Infa began to change direction and accelerated towards mainland China. It landed in Zhou Shan City of Zhejiang Province at noon on July 25th. At that time, the maximum wind force at the center of the typhoon was at level 13, which was equivalent to a wind speed of about 38 meters per second. Afterwards, it hovered in the area of Jiangsu and Zhejiang, causing the storm to last longer and causing serious damage to the area of Jiangsu, Zhejiang, and Shanghai. Afterwards, Infa moved northwest at a speed of about 10 km per hour and stopped again at about 9.50 am on the morning of the 26th in Pinghu City of Zhejiang Province. The maximum wind force near the center of the typhoon at the time of landing was level 10, equivalent to 28 meters per second. Infa became the only typhoon in meteorological records to land twice in Zhejiang. After the second landing of Infa, Shanghai became the center of the winds. The howling wind was accompanied by heavy rain, creating an apocalyptic scene. Many trees were uprooted, street signs fell, and hundreds of meters of barrier fence in the middle of the road were blown over. Pedestrians were helplessly blown away by the wind. After that, Infa went northwest, centering on Liyang city of Jiangsu province at 8 p.m. on July 27th. In the afternoon of the same day, Infa moved westward into Anhui province, and on the 28th, it hit Henan province, which had already been severely affected by the floods. It then moved northeastward and entered Shandong province on the morning of the 29th. As a result, heavy rainfall occurred in Shandong, Hebei, Tianjin, and Liaoning. On the morning of the 30th, Infa started to weaken, and the tropical low-pressure center entered the Bohai Sea near Liaoning. However, rainfall continued in northern China. The second characteristic is that the Infa cloud system is very wide, spanning about 1,500 kilometers from east to west and 1,200 kilometers from north to south. While the center of the typhoon was still near the southern part of the Ryukyu Islands, the outer winds and rain already began to hit Zhejiang and even impacted Jiangxi and Anhui provinces located inland. This shows how large the wind circle is. 
The third characteristic is that after Infa landed, both its intensity and moving speed were decreasing relatively slowly. The movement speed of Infa was about the same as walking speed, with an average of only 5 to 6 kilometers per hour. Due to the slow moving speed, heavy winds and rainstorms continued to occur everywhere the typhoon went, including torrential rain. The total daily rainfall of 12 national monitoring stations in Zhejiang and Shanghai exceeded the historical high in July. Henan province has just experienced a torrential rain that has been called once in 5,000 years by the authorities. The trauma from the last round of floods from natural and man-made causes still linger in people's hearts, and this round of rainfall has attracted the attention of the Henan authorities. The Henan government's public WeChat account, Henan Release, stated that due to the typhoon, most areas in Henan province will have showers, thunderstorms, and uneven distribution of rain until the 29th. Among them, Shangqiu, Zhoukou, Xinyang, and the western parts of Zhengzhou, Xinxiang, Hebei, and Anyang all saw moderate to heavy rain. This will add to the pain and suffering of the people in these already hard-hit areas. The second order was issued by the Henan Flood Control Command Center, asking Henan departments at all levels to maintain a state of war and pay close attention to the possible dangers of the typhoon, and not to be careless. The city of Zhengzhou closed all schools from the 27th to 29th. Luoyang Sheng, secretary of the Henan Provincial Party Committee, described Infa as the second battle Henan faces. Although the total amount of rainfall is smaller than last time, the dams have been soaked by high water levels for a long time, and has since become more vulnerable. From Luoyang Sheng's statement, it can be seen that the impact of Typhoon Infa on Henan is actually not too great, and from the forecast, the intensity of Infa has also been lowered. But the Henan authorities still pay very close attention. In fact, there are three obvious reasons why the Henan authorities are doing so. One is the erratic path of the typhoon. Since the typhoon hit Zhejiang twice, Henan authorities are also worried that Infa will change its path to Henan. Second, the Henan authorities may be worried that even if Infa does not make a landing in Henan, there may still be danger. After all, because the last flood has not completely receded, if there is another heavy rainfall, it may aggravate the disaster. There will be even more deaths and injuries among the people, which doesn't look good for Xi Jinping. Third, the Henan authorities need to make a little gesture for the people. They must show concern and compassion for the people's suffering, sympathize with them, and quell their anger to demonstrate the great glory and correctness of the party. In fact, if Henan authorities really cared about people's lives, there would not have been an unannounced flood and so many innocent people would not have died. As citizens under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party have no power or influence, they must be psychologically prepared for natural and man-made disasters. Everyone must consider and prepare some sort of countermeasure in advance, just in case. Otherwise, the victims will be themselves, and there will be no explanation or compensation from the government. Their deaths may not even be counted. In the afternoon of August 2nd, the Henan Provincial Government Press Office held another press conference to report on the latest data. As of 12 p.m. on August 2nd, the massive flood has killed 302 people and 50 people are missing. Although this number is two times more than the previously announced numbers, there are still doubts about the actual number of victims. In addition, according to official statistics, the province has 150 counties, 1,663 townships, and 14.5 million people were affected by the disaster. The province organized 933,800 evacuations and relocated 1.47 million people. Over 30,000 houses collapsed, 1.44 million acres of crops were affected, with an area of 0.63 million acres of crop failure and direct economic losses of 17.7 billion US dollars. According to a report by CCTV on August 1st, Wang Yong, the commander of the National Flood Control and Disaster Relief Headquarters, led a team to Henan province on the evening of July 31st to inspect and guide flood relief and post-disaster work. A member of the state council himself, Wang was the first vice state-level official to visit Henan province after the flooding. The July 20 floods in Zhengzhou caused heavy casualties, but there has been no sign of a senior official from the CCP visiting the site to inspect the situation. On July 21st, Xi Jinping gave verbal instructions and then left for Tibet. 
Li Keqiang was even more bizarre. In addition to a state council meeting where the deployment of flood prevention and disaster relief was one of the discussion topics, he only presided over a video conference on flood relief and prevention work on July 26th, and said that the information release should be open and transparent. He mentioned that under emergency, work, school, and business should be suspended. Stop subways and tunnels when they should be stopped, and seal them when they should be sealed. This sentence is considered to be directed against the Zhengzhou authorities. Luoyang Sheng, Provincial Party Secretary of Henan, and Xiu Li Yi, Municipal Party Secretary of Zhengzhou, belong to the Xi Jinping faction. During the southern floods last June, none of the seven members of the standing committee went to the Yangtze River, where the disaster was most severe, which drew strong criticism. Li Keqiang went to Guizhou in early July, but it wasn't a very hard-hit area. It wasn't until the morning of August 20th, after last year's Beidaihe meeting, that Li visited Chongqing, which was hit by floods at the time. On the other hand, it was only on August 18th, 2020, that Xi Jinping went to Anhui province to inspect the flood-stricken area of Jianghuai, but the floods there had already receded for a month. The Chinese government's leadership is particularly different from those in the past. In the past, whenever there was a big disaster, they would go to the front line to make a show, making people feel that they are very close to the people and are concerned about the situation. But this time, Xi Jinping did not go to Henan, nor did Li Keqiang, as if Li was forced to lie low. People can't help but think of the widely speculated political conflict between Xi and Li 